Welcome back, True Seeker. Saturday, December 2nd, 2017. With regards to it being Saturday, keep in mind that today is named after the planet Saturn. If you're not aware, the seven days of the week are named after the seven ancient planets, which included the moon and sun and five other planets that you can see move in the night sky. All of the things that were visible to the naked eye that moved, those were the planets to the ancients, including the sun and moon. They were known as the seven celestials. So Saturday, named after Saturn. What do you think Sunday is named after? Or Monday, Moon's Day. Tuesday, named after Mars. Every day of the week's named after one of the planets. And the reason that Tuesday and Mars don't line up so well is because it's based on the older names that the Greeks and other civilizations had for the planets. Anyhow, Voyager 1 is the story today on Saturday. And in the background drawing for this story, look at what planet's there. Saturn. Voyager 1 fires its thrusters for first time since 1980. Voyager 1 launched in 1977, 40 years ago. And the story is it hasn't had to use its thrusters since 80. And if you read the story, the reason they had to use the thrusters was to change its positioning so that it could communicate with Earth. And, you know, what just seems absolutely amazing is that any fuel that would be remaining in this that it would still be usable if you let gasoline set in your car for a year and you try to start your car without it having started for a year you're likely going to have a lot of problems you know fuel it has its own decomposition process it breaks down it loses its effectiveness it creates, if it's not used, you know, it creates byproducts, chemistry. So imagine fuel, you know, just resting in a tank for 37 years since its last use and then firing right up. And then also just at the extreme distance that this Voyager 1 is supposed to be. Anyhow, look at this. Voyager has the same gematria as Saturn. And we're getting this story on Saturday again. NASA likes to do a lot of rituals with Saturn. On September 15th of last year, they had the Cassini probe crash into Saturn. Did a lot of documentation of that. They had the Asin <laughs> NASA astronaut in space for 666 days, returning on September 3rd, you know, 9-3. Let's not forget that the sun is said to be 93 million miles away. That calculation goes back to the Greeks from the Hellenistic period, which equals 93. And in case you're new here, I'll link this calculator down below. When I first began, I only knew about the reduction method and the ordinal method. These other methods are the alphabetic order in reverse. English ordinals, the alphabetic order, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, up to Z is 26. Reduction is the same thing, but using the rules of numerology. So when you get to J, the 10th letter, 1 plus 0 is 1. K is the 11th letter, and reduction it's 2. L is the 12th letter, 1 plus 2 is 3. And this reverse is just the alphabetic order in reverse, the same rules. But Hellenistic period, 93. This is the period that the Greeks calculated the sun's distance. And here in the United States, we use miles, so that works out to 93 million miles and what's really interesting is to the ancients saturn was the most distant planet the sixth planet notice saturn equals 21 in reduction that's the sixth triangular number that means if you had one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six it equals 21 the sixth planet gematria of 21 but with regards to 93 the sun used to measure time saturn was also used to measure time the most distant of the planets you know like separate hands of a clock 
And that 42, you know, it connects to things like outer space, special number to Freemasonry, which is in control of NASA. Why it was established in 58, we'll get to it. But anyhow, this story came from November 28th. November 28th is the day that leaves 33 days left in the year. Look at the other Gematria Voyager, 33. So we get a story today, but it supposedly happened November 28th, you know, this past Tuesday, that they had to fire up the thrusters, and they're saying they fired up perfectly and everything went to plan. <laughs> Meanwhile, down here on planet Earth, most of us can't even get our cell phones to work. Where's our reception? Anyway, Voyager, 33, as well as 39, the reflection of 93. Think about the date, November 28th. 11 plus 28, 39. What a perfect date for a Voyager story. And as I've been explaining, and my book, again, about to release, have a whole chapter on NASA, and I show how they make all their news by the numbers. And I, I say in the book, I say, pay attention. Each time NASA releases a news story, if you use the code that's taught in the book, you'll see how it's all just based on this language of letters and numbers and dates on the calendar. Since NASA's inception up to the present, every single story is this way. There's no exceptions. This is the only way NASA makes news. And in that chapter, I emphasize how NASA is fascinated with Saturn. You know, here, here's, a, here's just the latest example. So, they also emphasize the word fires, fires up the thrusters. First time, Voyager 1 fires its thrusters for first time, you know. Fires has that Gematria 33. We've talked about that number a lot with Donald Trump, the apprentice president. Everything about him by the numbers. Notice CNN posts their article at 1013. 113 NASA was established July 29th 1958 date with 113 numerology comes from the Talmud Baba Kama 113a about how it's okay to you know use lies to circumvent a Gentile mainstream 113 dishonest 113 not true 113 fiction 113 bullshit 113 and a whole lot more long list of lies throughout history by the 113 code not coincidental that NASA was established on this date. At the same time, it's all about Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Scottish is also 113. With regards to NASA being established in 58, Freemasonry 58, Secret Society 58, the word science also has Gematria 58. And it's not to say that, you know, science completely belongs to Freemasonry. But what Freemasonry has done is they've hijacked science. They've hijacked pretty much all information in this world, and they use it to control the masses. You know, Watch that. Uh, I've linked that video a number of times. The tour of the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. There's a little shrine there to NASA, and talks about how every astronaut to travel to space has been a Freemason. NASA controlled by Freemasonry. So here's the article. NASA scientists needed to reorient the 40-year-old Voyager 1, the space agency's farthest spacecraft, so its antenna would point toward Earth 13 billion miles away. And NASA sure loves its 13. Remember the sun and the 12 constellations. The word space has gematria of 91, which is the 13th triangular number. If you add 1 through 13 together, 91. You know, NASA always emphasizing 13. As for 37 years, I'm trying to think where they're going with that. December, the month that this story comes in, has Gematria of 37. 37 is the 12th prime number. December is the 12th month. Remember a couple years back, I before the horse races even began, I guaranteed the Triple Crown would happen that year because it was going to be the 12th Triple Crown ever, and it would be 37 years since the last Triple Crown, and that's exactly what happened. American Pharaoh was the horse. And the whole year before that even happened, I talked about how that jockey, I didn't even know what horse he was going to ride that year, but I talked about how he would be perfect the next year for the Triple Crown, which ended up being the year he got it. He had the coating on his pants. 
all sorts of stuff. So these numbers, you know, they get used ritualistically. I suspect that's why they're bringing the story in December. December 37, 37, 12th month. So, when you write out 37, it also sums to 57, like outer space, like conspiracy, like Scottish Rite. The word trust that, you know, that's what they want. They want us to trust their information. And the masses do. The masses trust pretty much everything that comes through the television, through mainstream media. It's like the only thing that they do trust. Trust. You know? Maybe that's what they're going for. Trust us. As far out as this story seems. You know? Haven't fired up the fuel tanks for 37 years. Things 13 billion miles away. Is that the number? <laughs> 13 billion miles away. Man, that cell phone tower is not even that far away, and half the time I can't get reception. We need to go back to this knowledge from the 60s they had, huh? So, you know, it talks about here how they launched the twin spacecrafts Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 in 77, 40 years ago. Remember, this is the United States program. United States 40 and 77. Ah, 157. That's the 37th prime number. There we go. That, now we're making more sense. 157, the 37th prime. And, and of course, American is 37. So, uh, that's probably all part of it. American engineering, you know, working wonders. The nation that began with 13 colonies, 13 stripes, 13 stars. They talk about how it passed, or the, the discoveries it makes, brings up Jupiter. With regards to 13, if you write out 13 as a word, it sums to 99. The United States of America equals 99. Jupiter equals 99. Remember the Jupiter Juno probe landing on the 4th of July? Do you remember that story? I keep, I keep showing it in recent videos. The um, the year that the, the Jupiter probe landing happened, July 4th, 2016, 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 20 is 31, plus 16 is 47. The, the date numerology was 47 on the 4th of July. It was the first time in 99 years the date numerology had worked out that way. And then we get this Jupiter probe landing... And again, just in case you haven't seen me put this up, you have to know what they did on the day of this landing. Massive mockery from the people who want us to trust them. And understand, Freemasonry, they control NASA, they control your media, they control your government. They control things such as Google as well. And here's what Google did for the Jupiter probe landing on July 4th, 2016. They put up the word Goy, which has Gematria 47 using the alphabetic order, you know? Goy. It's a derogatory term for somebody who isn't Jewish. So, you know, just for a few other reminders, they crashed Cassini into Saturn on September 15th, 2016. They gave us updates all along the way of the story. Here they had a woman named Linda Spilker to give us the information. Look at the name of her name. 58, like Freemasonry, like the year NASA's established. 77, you know, something they're emphasizing in this story. These numbers are super relevant to them. Secret Society has Gematria of 77. And the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, it's headquartered in Washington on the 77th Meridian, known as the American Meridian. You see? Secret Society, power. Power is also 58 and 77. Break out your S exception here. Wa whoops. Washington, 58. Just like United States, nation founded by Freemasonry. You know, Freemasonry, Secret Society, Solomon's Temple. All these things, 58. 
House of the Temple has the shrine to NASA, or it's explained, it's Freemasonry running NASA. This story, this update came 33 days from the final plunge. Another doctor mentioned in it, Dr. Earl Mays, just another 58. On April 7th was when this story was announced that Cassini was going to crash into Saturn on September 15th. You know, April 7th, 4 slash 7 or 7 slash 4, Cassini 74, Masonic 74, 47 degrees on the Freemason compass, their logo with the big G, time 47. Four and seven have a relationship. The divisors of four, one, two, and four, sum to seven. Seven's the fourth prime number, you see. As for it crashing on September 15th, 15 slash nine, again, it's the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, 159. And NASA likes to intertwine Christianity in all of their stories. Remember, the entire Bible is based on what's happening above. So there's your parallel with NASA and Christianity. All religion is based on what's happening above. As above, so below. The Son of God. Why do you think they gave us the same word sun as the thing in the sky that makes life possible as the term for the male offspring? You know, the Son of God. So anyway... Cassini equaled 74, right? We covered that. Jesus is 74. Jesus Christ is 74. Gospel 74. Cross is 74. The Egyptian word for cross is 74. Messiah 74. Did I say already Jesus Christ is 74 too? There's 42 generations to Jesus. If you write out 42, it sums to 74. That's the way the New Testament estimate begins jesus is the savior 42 he died for your sins 42 there's the 42 laws of ma'at which goes back to egypt so we have this thing cassini 74 and it's crashing into saturn which again is 93 just like crucifix is 93 just like nazareth is 93 just like god's son is 93 74 93 it, recently, there was a story put out. I covered this in the past. Science came out and said they figured out the date of Jesus' crucifixion. It was April 3rd, which is the 93rd day of the year. Okay? Sun, 93 million miles away. Now, the thing is, after Jesus was crucified, he resurrected, right? Resurrection, 159. This thing crashed into Saturn on September 15th. New Testament, 159. You see? Christmas Eve, they're supposedly orbiting the moon, the astronauts from NASA, and they're reading from Genesis. Why are they reading from Genesis? Genesis says you can't get into space. You know, it says there's a dome over the earth. The earth is separated from the heavens above. So why is NASA reading from Genesis as they're orbiting the moon for the first time? That was Christmas Eve, of 1968 because it's all mockery it's all mockery and i only take my arguments as far as i can prove can they get into space or not i don't ultimately know i don't know you know to me gps is a good argument that they can get satellites into space I don't know how else GPS works. Global positioning satellites. I know that there's such a thing as satellite cell phones and they work really well all over the place. You know, they cost a lot. But something's going on, you know. Can they send a, uh, a thing 13 billion miles away and communicate with it? I, I highly doubt it. Like I said, they can't even get the cell phone tower that's miles away to communicate properly with my cell phone or your cell phone. We're all having cell phone problems. Calls are dropping, static. You know, you leave gasoline in your car for a year and you try to turn it on, you're going to have problems. Leave gasoline in your car for 37 years? There's no way it's going to work. And sure, you can add things like fuel stabilizer to make it last longer. But, you know, 
37 years. It's just... It's a long time. It's a long time for anything to sit in the cupboard, if you will. And then call on it. But just understand, NASA, all of their news is rolled out ritualistically. And usually after the fact. I mean, why didn't they tell us about this Tuesday when it happened? Why do they wait till Saturday to let us know? You know, that they'll break the stupidest stories. Remember when um, Oregon, the college football team, lost to the Christian school 41 to 47? They were up 31 to no Look at this, you guys. Oregon was up 31 to nothing in the Alamo Bowl at halftime, right? And then the Christian school came back and won 47 to 41. And as soon as the game ended, whoops, the computer just crashed. What I was saying was the Alamo Bowl to start 2016, as soon as it ended, breaking news from all major outlets that there was a standoff at a closed federal building in the middle of Oregon in a town of less than 400 people. And I was saying, how contrived is this? The Alamo Bowl ends in Texas, Oregon losing to a Texas team, and then boom, standoff in Oregon. I said, this is what I'm talking about with rig sports and rig news. And consider at that time, I'd been explaining all year how the Broncos were going to beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl and how it synced up with all the race war propaganda in the news. That game was about to be played days later. But what I said as the news broke was this. Watch this standoff last either 13 days, which is how long the Alamo lasted, or 41 days, which is the 13th prime number. And I explained that night why 41 days would be absolutely perfect. And here's why it was. It was a standoff by ranchers, which equals 41. The leader was Ammon Bundy, who's from Bunkerville. I mean, think about that name, Bunkerville. You know, a bunker, something you get down to, you know, hold off an enemy, kind of like a standoff. Plus, they said they were armed, Ammon, Ammo. Obvious propaganda, obvious made-up character for the news. And not only that, but San Antonio, where the Alamo took place, also 41. And since then, we've learned reduction or reverse reduction gematria, which I didn't know at the time. But look at that, even standoff is 41 there. And I explained, if it lasted 41 days, which did seem lengthy, but I said if it lasts 41 days, it'll end on the 42nd day of the year, which is exactly what happened. And think about it, this Texas standoff, Waco 42, but even more importantly, Alamo 42. And I, I forget the name of the quarterback. <laughs> Hold on, we can just look it up real quick. The name of the quarterback for TCU in this comeback win it was like Kohlhausen or something, and I know Disney thought about making a movie about it. Backup, QB, TCU, comeback, win, Alamo. I, I remember that his name summed to 42. And I remember that he wore number six because they won by six points. Trevon Boykin is who was injured. This is him. This is him right here. Bram Kohlhausen. <laughs> Bram Kohlhausen. Look at it. Kohlhausen, 42. You see, it's just such scripted crap. And consider that this game was played on January 2nd, which can be written 2 slash 1, Bible 21. If you write out 21, it sums to 42. The New Testament begins with the 42 generations to Jesus. TCU's mascot is the horned frog, 65, like Christianity. Again, they won with 47 points. Consider February 11th, the 42nd day of the year, is also a lot like the number 211, which is the 47th prime. The reflection of 47 is 74, Oregon. That game went to a score of 47, 41, 88 combined points. The winning team wore purple. You see? All scripted. All by the code. And again, all news is contrived this way. All sports games are rigged this way. It's why I have so many correct predictions in the time I've been doing this, you know? And 
I, again, it's a real shame that Google took down my channel because I could always reference my videos. I could say, go back and watch my video from January 2nd, 2016, where I said, watch this standoff last 13 days or 41 days and why 41 would be perfect. And then I can tell you, go back and watch the video from the day it ended where I said, what do you know? What do you know? Right again, right again. And idiots want to keep showing up here and going, well, then predict this, then predict this. Look, can you guys just shut the fuck up? How many more things do I need to predict? I've proven my point, you know, about a million times over. How about wake the fuck up, moron? Not, I need another prediction. I need another prediction. No, you learn to predict, dumb motherfucker. I've been teaching you this shit for how long now? So let's also go back to this NASA story to close here. This story was about how this woman is spending 666 days in space. They gave us the updates along the way. Emphasis right here on 666 days in space. NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, 666. You know? Everything done by the code. And again, this ended on September 3rd, 9 slash 3. What's really funny is if um, you look up the articles from September 3rd when this mission ended. It did end on September 3rd. It lasted 666 days. Look up the reporting from September 3rd. Every single outlet that reported on this said it was 665 days. For some reason, when the story came out, they wanted to go away from that 666 number. You know? Look it up. September 3rd, everyone reported that it was 665 days. Maybe they realized the mocking was too much. So. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Yeah, we'll leave it there. That's enough. Till next time.